Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks to our friends at KRK, we get to put on a three-part series completely for free that's all about getting the most out of your speakers. And of course, all of this advice is going to work whether or not you're using KRK speakers. I'll talk about them a little later on. But for right now, I just want to stress that really one of the most important things is not just what speakers you choose to get, but how you're going to place them in your room what you're going to do to your room later as far as acoustic treatment is concerned, and then possibly there's a third step of EQ correction. We'll talk about some strategies for all three of those. If you don't get your monitoring situation together, you're never going to get the kinds of results that you really want out of the studio. You're never going to stop chasing your own tail, and you're never really going to be confident in your decision making unless you get your speakers, your monitoring situation together. And a big part of that is the room that they're in and a very overlooked part, how you place them in the room. I've got to tell you, as big of an advocate as I am for putting some acoustic treatment in your room to get the most out of your speakers, you can avoid so many of the problems that people try to solve with acoustic treatment by just placing your speakers properly in the room to begin with. A lot of people don't realize how big this is. Getting your speakers into the wrong spot in the room can make the low end absolutely crazy. And there's a lot of danger zones, places you don't want to put your speakers in the room. And we'll go into some strategies there. You also want to think about how far the speakers are from each other, how far they are from you. And I'll give you some strategies there, regardless of what size or shape room you're in. This is actually even more important for those of us who aren't able to build out a studio from scratch. You can avoid a lot of problems that your speakers and your monitoring will give you by building room from scratch and building it with as few parallel surfaces as possible and putting a lot of thought and some acoustics expertise into the actual build. But for those of us who can't do that, placing the speakers is even more essential for those of us working in rectangular, square rooms, odd shaped rooms. And I'll give you some tips for all the most common types of rooms that so many of us put speakers in and some tips for some really weird shaped rooms like L's and squares and things like that. All right, you ready to get started? I think I am. Let's dive right in. Quick word of thanks to KRK for sponsoring this. They sent me a lovely set of their Generation 4 of their Rocket Series. These are probably some of the best-selling speakers in the history of the studio world. They've been making speakers about 30 years, and the Rockets are just really affordable and really fun-sounding. These are the Rocket 7s. They put out a lot of level, but still enough neutrality for them to really be a great studio speaker. And there's a reason that these are one of the best-selling speakers out there, and there's a reason you'll see a lot of pros using their higher-up series, their V-series. I see things like the V8s in Pro Studios. Uh, there's some major mixers using those, and you'll find these rockets in a lot of big project studios and the secondary monitors, even in larger rooms. There's even one mastering engineer I know who keeps a secondary set of rockets just as reference. All right, enough of that for now. We'll talk a little bit more about them later, but I'm going to give you some strategies for placing your speakers properly in the room to get the most out of them. And I'm going to give you some tools, including some free tools to make the process of setting up your speakers even easier. In parts two and three of this series, we'll look at acoustic treatment and EQ correction. But let's put that in the back burner for right now. Okay, there are a few major principles when it comes to setting up your speakers in your room. And if you get these right, you're going to run into a lot less trouble getting the most out of your speakers. I'm also hopefully going to bust some myths that a lot of people run into, come across on YouTube and other places about placing speakers. There's some kind of half-truths out there that you might see in other videos. I want to see if I can clarify just a little bit for you. Now, one of the biggest principles when it comes to placing your speakers in the room is you got to listen. We're going to talk about doing some measurements here and some spots to avoid putting your speakers and some ideal places to put them, but it always comes down to listening. You've got to listen to what's coming out of your speakers to make decisions. I find this as easy as to do with one speaker at first, so just playing sound out of one speaker, trying to find an optimal place for it, an optimal place for your listening position, and then folding the second speaker in to do additional checks. There are a few ways you can listen to speakers. One of them is by playing sine wave sweeps. So this would be really low frequencies all the way up to the highest frequencies. 
pink noise, which contains all of the frequencies and kind of musical proportions, and some of your favorite music. And honestly, the music check, that is the biggest thing. You want to find music that you're really familiar with, that you love the sound of, that has a low end that you're familiar with, and ideally has a low end where it's not just like one note kind of thing going on. You really want to know what's going on from the subs all the way up to the upper bass, because that's where some of the biggest room problems come from. There are some great tools, including a free tool. Our sponsors for this video, KRK, have an app. I'm going to open it right here. There is this app that has the ability to play sine wave sweeps and pink noise through your speakers and also has a real-time analyzer using your smartphone's built-in microphone. So if you go to your app store, wherever you add, download your apps, and type in KRK, you're going to find this free app pretty quickly. I'll talk about some of the features here. But this will allow you to monitor what's coming out of your speakers. Well, it's just a little eighth inch cable to dual quarter inch cable. You can even play some noise through your speakers to help test them. And I'll get more into that a little later on. Okay, your other core principles. Symmetry. Symmetry is a big one. You want to make sure that the speakers are equidistant from the walls. That's big. And you want your whole room to be set up with symmetry in mind. This might sound a little obvious, but you'd be surprised how many times I walk into a project or home studio and see a bookcase just on one side or a couch or a chair just on one side. You really want to make sure that things like bookcases and couches and chairs are behind you or in front of you, not off to one side or the other. Windows. This is another big thing when it comes to orientation. Ideally, you don't want a window off to one side, but not off to the other side. That window should be behind you, or ideally, I'd say, in front of you. The great reason to put a window in front of you is speakers don't put out a ton of high-frequency information behind them, and windows are mostly reflective at high frequencies. So the low end tends to pass right through them. So, if you are able to put any windows behind the speakers in front of you, that's a better place to put it, and you can have more symmetry in the room. All right, our next big principle is, should you be firing the long way down the room or the short way down the room where you have the speakers against the wide wall? The ideal, generally, is if you have a rectangular shaped room like so many of us are dealing with, you want to fire the long way down the room. It'll give you so much more wiggle room in avoiding some of the danger zones that we'll talk about a little bit later. And generally, you're going to be able to get the speakers further away from you and further away from the walls, potentially, if you were firing a long way down the room. You won't have to have them so close to the back wall. If you have a particularly large room, putting the speakers against the wide wall isn't necessarily the end of the world. You can have good results that way, but chances are your whole listening setup, you're going to be a little closer to the speakers than is ideal, and they might get a little closer to the wall than is ideal. All right, so those are our first three major principles. You got to listen. We're not going to do this by measurements alone. If you take 30 minutes just setting up your speakers and really listening to them in different places in the room, these are things that you're going to be listening to for hours and hours and hours on end. And even just spending at least 30 minutes in the beginning is going to give you so much more enjoyment and so much more useful information coming off of these speakers for the hours upon countless hours that you're going to be spending listening to them. It's time well invested and it doesn't necessarily have to take too long. Our second principle was we got to have the symmetry. And our third principle, try to fire the long way down the room, assuming you're in a rectangular room. All right, our next big thing is avoiding major danger zones for speakers. And the first one I will give you is the corner of the room. At all costs, try to keep your speakers away from being in the corner of the room or having them on either side of a corner. Corners are where bass tends to kind of build up the most. You can just get a lot more low end than would be ideal. And this generally isn't going to be super useful low end when you're putting them into the corner. There are also other spots where you could put your speakers or your sweet spot, your listening spot, where you could have major problems in the low end. If you've ever worked in an untreated room for any length of time, you probably have experienced being in one spot of the room and the bass sounds one way, but then you move your head six inches one way, or you go sit in the couch in the back of the room, and all of a sudden the low end is telling you something totally different. While you can mitigate this with good acoustic treatment, you can mitigate it a lot even sooner by just getting the speakers in the right place and avoiding the biggest danger zones. And the biggest danger zones for placing your speaker is you want to avoid placing your speakers at a 25% point in the room. 
There's also a big danger zone for where you put your sweet spot, your chair, your listening position. You want to make sure that that is not at a 50% spot in the room. All right, so good thing to have for this is a handy dandy tape measure. Tape measures are great for all sorts of things. If you have one in the studio, if you don't have one, go get one. You can measure the distance of two microphones to a snare drum. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. And one of the things that you can do is measure out danger zones for your speakers. So I won't bore you with my poor carpentry and measuring skills here, but I will tell you that I measured this just a moment ago. And this shorter length in the room is 110 or a bit over in inches. Let's call it 100 inches, just so we can do some nice round math. And the long way here, it's well over 220 inches, but let's call it 200 inches, just to give us, again, some nice, plain, easy, simple math. So the points we want to avoid is we want to avoid placing these speakers at that 25% position. In this room, that would be 25 inches away from either sidewall. And this is because if you're putting them at that quarter position, you're much more likely to excite room modes and room nodes. These issues where you have parts of the room that have the bass amplified and parts where you have these deep nulls. It can be really, really confusing. Same thing with your chair. You want to avoid the 50% position, particularly being 50% from the long walls. Some symmetry from side to side isn't bad. You can have your listening position 50% against the other walls, but as far as distance from the speakers goes, definitely avoid that 50% spot. So in this 200-ish, we'll call it, inch room, we would not want to place the chair 100 inches away. Chances are it's going to come in a little closer to the speakers than that. In most of the smaller rooms that people have to work with when it comes to project studios, you're probably going to move your speakers closer to the wall than that 25% spot. So what is a good distance? I'm not going to tell you just where not to put them, but I'll give you some hints on where to put them as well. A great place to start with how far the speakers should be from either wall, try one-fifth. 20% position. So instead of having the speaker 25 inches from the wall, just having it 20 inches from the wall can make a big, big difference. And you can hear this for yourself. Again, I'd recommend moving the speaker around and hearing it in a few different positions. So that could be a good starting point for you, a fifth of the way away from the wall. You could also go in closer together than that 25% position. But you might want to just measure out and mark down with some tape on the floor your 25% spot, your spot where you don't want the speakers to go. And then maybe mark down your 20% spot, a potentially good spot for the speakers to go. This goes for both the long way and the wide way. When it comes to where to put your chair, where to put your listening position, remember you want to avoid that 50% spot in the room. It could be helpful to lay down some tape on the floor just to mark that off. And chances are your chair is going to come in closer than that 50% position. So what is a good distance? I've heard a couple other videos throughout 38% rule. You should try to have your chair 38% away from the back wall. I don't really think it's a, it's a rule, but it is actually a kind of general framework that could be useful. I mean, it could really be anywhere from, say, 35% to 40% of the way back in your room. That could be a good starting position. And you might want to scoot that chair forward and backwards and hear how it sounds. So that is a good starting point for your listening position, somewhere between 35% and 40% back into the room. If you were to set up these speakers for some reason, you really had to do it against the wide wall, you might find yourself having to put your chair further back. And in that case, if your speakers are going to be on the wide wall, you might want to scoot your chair or your listening position back so that it's, again, about 20% away from that back wall. And those are some good starting points. So if you're in a room like this one, let's call it, again, 100 inches by 200 inches, a good spot for the speaker to wind up might be 20 inches away from the sidewall and 50 inches away from the back wall. But again, don't just measure and expect that to be perfect. Do some listening. And do some listening from the sweet spot you expect to be in. When you find something you really like, put some tape down on the floor to mark it. Ideally, once you've got your speakers in a great place, you're not going to want to move them and have to do this work again ever. 
So make sure that they're marked in case you ever need to service them or that kind of thing. You'll be super glad that there's a little bit of long lasting tape down on the floor to help mark those speakers for good if you ever have to move them around. You can get back to a place where you're really familiar with the sound, which is huge. All right, once you've listened and done this with just one speaker, it's time to bring the other speaker into the equation. And another thing to think about here again is symmetry, one of those earlier principles. And another rule, or it's really a guideline that you'll hear is something called the equilateral triangle rule, where the ideal is to have the distance between the two speakers be identical to the distance between either speaker and you, so that it's like an equilateral triangle. You're at the tip of the triangle, these are at the other two spots in the triangle, and the same distance between these speakers as there are from the speakers to you. That is the ideal setup. And if I was setting up a mastering studio or some critical listening environment like that, I would probably try to adhere pretty closely to this rule. But a lot of mixers find that they actually prefer breaking this rule a little bit and bringing the speakers in a little closer to each other. So it's okay to have a kind of stretched out triangle. The benefit of this is it actually narrows your stereo image, which a lot of mixers and music producers end up preferring because it encourages them to push their stereo image wider in their mixes. And that's something that most of us are often going for in commercial mixes. Unless you're working in jazz or classical, a lot of modern styles of music production require, demand, suggest, really desire and want to have the width pushed a little bit more. It can sound a lot more exciting to listeners, whether it's on headphones or speaker systems. And to do that, bringing your speakers a little closer together can really encourage you to widen things up. It's a trick that a lot of mixers like to do. And if you're having trouble following all of these rules and getting an equilateral triangle, that's okay. Err on the side of bringing your speakers closer together rather than further apart. If you bring them further apart, you'll be less daring in making bold panning moves, which is not great in mixing, and your center image may also start to suffer. You may not have as coherent of a center image to work with, which isn't great for mixing either. So again, you want to break this equilateral triangle rule, have at it. A lot of people do that, do it on purpose. And if you're going to do it, think about bringing your speakers in slightly from the equilateral triangle rather than out. That would be the ideal. You also want to think about symmetry in angling your speakers. If you're going to do the equilateral triangle thing, you'd want them tilted in 30 degrees. So it's just like the corners of an equilateral triangle. And if you're breaking the equilateral triangle rule, 30 degrees is a good place to start. But you could also try to experiment with moving the angle out slightly or back in slightly. If you do that, you go on and make sure that the angles are the same on either side. That's really going to help you with your symmetry and with your stereo field quite a bit. So you want to make sure that these are accurately the same distance. Whether you choose 25 degrees instead of 30 degrees, absolutely fine. If you choose 35 degrees instead of 30 because you're liking what it does to the soundstage, that's fine. But make sure that they are symmetrical. And another great way to do that is with, once again, the KRK app has this cool little feature. You can go right in here to the monitor align function. You put it on top of one of your speakers. You click which speaker it is, right or left, and you turn it this way or that way. It'll tell you exactly how many degrees you turn the speakers, which is awesome. It really takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. So check out that free KRK app if you haven't already. Get it for your smartphone. It's going to allow you to play signal through these speakers. It has a real-time analyzer. They'll show you the frequency response of your speakers. It's got that monitor line tool. It's got a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll link in the description down below to a video where you can see all the stuff this does. It can also even have this delay function that'll tell you how far the speakers are away from each other and from the listening position by shooting a signal in. And because sound travels at a set speed, you know, through the air, it actually allows you to use this almost like it's virtual measuring tape. We'll tell you how far you are away from the speakers, which is a cool function when you're trying to dial in the last little bits of symmetry into your room. Okay, one last thing on speaker alignment. You'll probably hear often people will tell you when you're setting up your speakers that you want your tweeters aiming at your ears. So you may need to move your speakers up or down or turn them on their sides to get them into the right position where when you're sitting in your chair, the tweeters are aiming at your ears. That's actually kind of wrong. 
It's close. It's not terrible, but it's a little bit wrong. The place on the speaker you actually want pointing directly at your ear is the focal point of the speaker. And that's usually between the tweeter and the woofer on a two-way design like one of these. Uh, if you have a three-way speaker that has three drivers in it, it might be between the tweeter and the mid-range driver. Some speakers will tell you in the manual where the focal point is, others won't, but often it is going to be between two drivers in a two-way. So if the tweeters are slightly above your ears, that's actually okay and actually slightly better than having the tweeters pointing straight at your ear. You usually get a little bit more coherence and even better frequency response if you have the focal point usually just below the tweeter pointing at your ear. So whether you have a little bit to spend or a lot to spend, remember that acoustic treatment is a big thing. We're going to talk about the, that in the next part of this series. So when you're going out there and selecting speakers, remember that some of your resources should be going not just into the speakers, but the room itself, which is another great reason that our sponsors today, KRK, make such affordable speakers. So you have some budget left over to deal with the acoustic treatment and potentially even EQ correction. The KRKs have some of that built in, and I'll talk about that in the third part when we talk about strategies to getting the last little bits of performance out of your speaker and room situation by doing some potential EQ correction to both your room and your speakers. One last quick note I want to give you is if you have to place your speakers in oddly shaped rooms, and the two most common types are L and square, and both of these are a little problematic. With an L-shaped room, start off by putting your speakers in one of the narrow points of the L, firing backwards into the angle of the L. You're going to have some way in which your room is asymmetrical. And the first place usually to start is have your listening position closer to the open part of the L and your speakers in that closed part of the L. That may not be ideal for your room, however. You may want to try it both ways. So I encourage some experimentation in an L-shaped room. You're going to end up breaking one of our rules or guidelines of perfect symmetry if you try to put these speakers in the angle of the L. But in your unique environment, it may end up being the better method. If you have a really narrow L that forces you to bring these speakers too close together or too close to the walls, it may be worth trying to put those speakers right in the angle of the L shooting the other way. The problem with this is you're going to have one speaker that's very far away from a wall and one speaker that's much closer to a wall. It's actually not a big problem for the speaker that's very far away from the wall. Because if anything, you're going to reduce the level and intensity of the reflections coming off the wall. But for the speaker that's closer to the wall, you, the reflections are going to be significantly different, and this can upset your stereo imaging and the symmetry that you're experiencing and how cohesive the center is. That said, I found that in the high and mid frequencies, it's actually pretty easy to mitigate the problem of excessive reflections from the speaker that's close to the wall just by putting up some acoustic treatment on this side, on the initial reflection points for the closer speaker. And then for the further speaker, it's not as much of a problem because the wall that it would reflect off of is so much further away that they're already dampened. But for the low end, it's not as big of a problem because low end tends to be more omnidirectional to begin with and we have a little bit more trouble specifically echolocating low frequencies where they're coming from so it's not as big of an issue at the bottom that said it's not ideal the other situation that is a weird type of room that has its own challenges is a perfect square room and these are problematic because you want to make sure you actually do break symmetry, you don't want your speaker to be the same distance from both of your walls in a square room. Because any room modes or nodes that you're exciting in that position, they're going to be excited doubly. So what you'll want to do is make sure that you're breaking the symmetry in a good way by making sure the speaker is a different distance from the side wall than it is from the back wall. And a good guideline that you often hear is a five to eight ratio. So let's say that the perfect place for your speakers were 50 inches from the sidewall. You might want to bring them in 80 inches from that back wall. Or if it was 25 inches from the sidewall was going to be ideal in your sized room, then maybe you'd end up going 50 inches from the back wall. So a 5 to 8 ratio breaks that symmetry in a good way and makes sure you're not doubly exciting room modes and room nodes in a square situation. 
Chances are you'll want your speakers closer to the sidewall than the back wall in a square room, but different things can work in different environments. So pick the layout that makes the most sense for you, but try for that five to eight ratio to really reduce the amount of resonances and nulls in the bottom end in a square room. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. I'm going to put all these principles into a checklist down below in the description that you can check out so you can remember all of them. I know I just threw a lot at you. But if you follow all of these principles, you put yourself into a much better position. You'll find yourself chasing your own tail a lot less when you're making critical listening decisions, and you'll find that whatever acoustic treatment or EQ correction you do will go a lot further if you're in a great starting place to begin with, where you're avoiding room modes and room nodes and issues that can cause smearing and the like in your stereo image. But with that said, the next most important thing is saving some of your speaker budget to put up some acoustic treatment in your room. Whatever my speaker budget is, if it's as low as $300, as high as $30,000, I want to set aside some of my resources to make sure I'm not just putting it on the speakers, but also being mindful that I want some treatment up on these walls, or else I'm never going to get the most out of those speakers. Whatever acoustic treatment or EQ correction you do will go a lot further if you're in a great starting place to begin with, where you're avoiding room modes and room nodes and issues that can cause smearing and the like in your stereo image. But with that said, the next most important thing is saving some of your speaker budget to put up some acoustic treatment in your room. Whatever my speaker budget is, if it's as low as $300, as high as $30,000, I want to set aside some of my resources to make sure I'm not just putting it on the speakers, but also being mindful that I want some treatment up on these walls, or else I'm never going to get the most out of those speakers. We'll talk about all that and a whole lot more in the next two parts in this series. Did you have any questions about what we went over today? Feel free to go down into the comments and let me know. I'll be looking down there and trying to answer some comments directly if you get confused about any of these points. Also remember to like and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss when the other two parts in this series come out. For now, this has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks to KRK for sending these speakers and making this series free to the public. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. See you next time.